In this episode, we check out Federal Yellow to see if it's the same color as tacos. Not bad. We take a moment to look at the graphic on the switch list. I have to give you a size as far as the overall image. We go post ops and overview some of the things we can improve, including a little JMRI, as well as do a little rail fanning. Well, while we're out there, we did catch the first look at the in-person SDL 39s, and then the finishing up of some weathering, a few techniques that might help you. And also check out what the curmudgeon's gripe of the week is this week. Only in this episode, Sue the Milwaukee Road. By now, it's pretty obvious that I used the Tamaya accent wash on just about everything. And if you haven't followed along in previous episodes... Tamaya accent washes? Oh, come on. You'd put that on your taco if you could. <laughs> he puts it on his tacos. Mm. Not bad. From tacos to bulkheads, it can be used on just about anything. I am a big fan, obviously, because I do like the effect that it's creating. There are a lot of different techniques that you can use, and, well, when looking at the prototypes, you can definitely find yourself there just by using a lot of different materials. In a previous episode of the GN in 1970, we covered this air slide from the original Tangent car that came right out of the box to this then weathered, again, looking at the prototype, Tangent car been pretty happy with the results that we've been achieving from the washes but at the same time there are a lot of different applications that can be had and I don't cover every single one we go from this exact rail hopper that takes on that same wash but it gives a little bit different effect we have a white car and I find light colors can be difficult this is with the wash with the colored pencils another subtle technique but it's kind of getting the point across gray cars can be fairly easy to weather at least in my opinion this is just with washes and chalks you can see here we've kind of given that, that look of the rippled metal. We've got a car that would have been hauling concrete. Same type of thing. A lot of different techniques applied. These all have a base wash at least somewhere underneath them. And this is where you bring out the chalks and pencils and other materials to kind of work with those washes. Is it quiz time? It's quiz time. Many locomotives were utilized across the system in local and transfer service as well as through trains, sharing that duty with the covered wagons. Over the years, several units were upgraded or modified, some receiving short noses, and others were renumbered. Do you know what 2554 is classified as on the Sioux Line roster? Was it A, GP9, B, GP22, C, GP35, or D, GP40? We'll find out later in this episode. 45 seconds for JMRI. To dive a little bit deeper in regards to that custom logo or line drawing that I added to the JMRI switch list, which I mentioned in a previous video. And the last little bit of information was where the logo is. I ended up making just a custom logo um, with that track plan on it, and then I ended up loading it right here. Here's a look at the actual document of that custom logo with the line drawing on it. This is how it's set up, so it's able to justify all the way to the right within JMRI. Uh, to give you a size as far as the overall image, it is 692 by 1140 at 300 ppi. This just gives you an idea of the actual file size that you'll need to be able to create something like this to get it to look like the switch list that I created. So hopefully that helps you a little behind the scenes on that custom logo. And you guys are able to create this on your own JMRI operations. Time's up. Often a lot of light or bright colors can be a little bit difficult to manage. Now, this is just Federal Yellow. It's a Milwaukee Road Yellow, commonly used on a lot of their different freight cars. They went through a lot of different looks, tones, and shades just based on their age, sunlight, and what actually wore them out. When I end up looking at it out of the box to try to get that more prototypical look, there are a lot of techniques that I pile on top to be able to get that effect. Here we're using white chalks, the panel line accent, and colored pencils. But then here we just have the washes in combination with the chalks. And there are some times when I add in just a little bit of subtleties, like the white chalk just down the side of a car. If the prototype's showing it, you can add that in, and that's how you get that flavor. But to take you down the road of how a car like this gets to where it's at, I'm going to show you that layering process, the chalks, the washes, and the colored pencils. post up. Hold the phones, this is After Ops. All right, here we are looking at the Post Ops of the High Watt Elevator District. I had a couple fellow modelers, Joe and Dave, come out and run the railroad, and we'll give you a look at kind of where cars ended up, a few of the things that I need to address uh, or finish addressing because I was mid-process at the time. But pros and cons across the board, pros, it went well. Took about an hour to run through the entire system um, with cars previously sorted so 
437 already had its cars ready. I just sorted them basically by industry and uh, they could then move forward with a little bit more ease. I just wasn't sure how much time it would take. Uh, I did send this switch list off for the PDF format to a fellow modeler, Tom Klamoski, who provided a little bit of feedback. Whoa, a little bit of feedback. That looks like a book. Well, Tom is an author. He did break down kind of how he would have switched the elevator district, which helps me then see how car movements would be handled as well as little tips for future operators moving forward. One of those things would be car spots. And as I noted on previous video, I did name the industries. But if we swing down to Atkinson here, uh, Atkinson is the two near tracks. And just to kind of cover the way I had it set up is the Chicago Northwestern Zito yellow car, the Great and Shed, I had set up as, that's called track one, or the feed and wash rack I was calling track two. Now Tom noted that the main, which is where the post-it note is, would actually count from the main on out. For General Mills that's by us, it would be the next track is track one, and then that car is sitting on track two. So you've got some clarity in terms of where stuff is spotted. But back to Atkinson here, I ended up flip-flopping the stickers. So these things are just taped down, and I ended up just peeling them off and moving them. Well, when Dave went to move the cars, he says, Well, this thing says to put it on track two, which would be where the CNW car is, and it's supposed to be at the wash rack. Well, that has moved over. And then that feed car, which is the Chicago Northwestern Green car, is supposed to be at the grate. So that's not a, a faux pas on Dave's behalf. That's a faux pas on my behalf from labeling. I shouldn't have probably gotten so anxious to make those adjustments. I did. Uh, but in the end, it's going to make for what I think is better operations. cars that ended up getting switched out there was a car that was at the wash rack and Dave moved it into the shed or Joe moved it he was the engineer uh, Dave was our conductor for the evening but overall very pleased with the overall operations themselves we're gonna swing down to the switch list real quick one thing I noted also on housekeeping Tom as well as a few other modelers said the Sioux line where it's spelt out s-o-o-l-i-n-e there's too many characters they should actually be truncated down to four or less but when you look at the freight cars, I was entering them into the system because it said Sioux line. And then they have some cars that say Sioux. So if for some reason, that 75,000 series had a Sioux line 75,000 series for accounting purposes, was I going to confuse my operators? I've yet to find one that has uh, doubled up like that, but I'm going to go into JMRI, make an edit, take out the Sioux lines, and just have them say Sioux. My name is Sue. How do you do? And I'll show you how quick you can do that. It's going to take less than 30 seconds. Another quick 45 seconds for a JMRI. All right, just to take a real quick look at how you can change your reporting marks on a number of cars without having to go one by one. Now we've got these things basically just pulling up on the cars menu. They're in alphabetical order. And I go down and I find that group of cars. There's a whole bunch of those Sioux line cars. Well, I'm going to change it to just S-O-O because that's the way the reporting marks um, would have been on the switch list. So I'm just going to hit edit. You go to edit again, and it's going to bring up the road, and I'm just going to type in S-O-O, -O, hit replace, and it's going to say, do you want to replace Sue line with Sue? And I'm going to say yes. And now all those cars have been amended. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and in the end, it's going to clean up our switch list, and that's the end goal. Attempting to weather the prototype. How can essentially the same shade of yellow take on so many different looks on various cars? Well, a lot of times it's the commodities they're holding. It can be the age. It can be the location that they're ran. So, so often I always just flip to the prototype. I end up looking at this 4180 air slide and I pull open this Milwaukee Road Volume 2 color guide to be able to start a reference. At least, where do you begin? In this case, I can see there's a lot of browns and there's some discoloration on the car. And I've covered a lot of these techniques in the past. Obviously, you remove your couplers and trucks. I'm chalking this whole thing white with Doc O'Brien's weathering powders. Once I've chalked it completely, I take it into the spray booth and I put some dull coat on it. After the dull coat is dried, I chalk it one more time and put it into the spray booth for one more layer of dull coat. <laughs> now 
Undoubtedly one of my favorite things to do is go check out the North Metro Model Railroad Club here in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. My dad and I swung in after one of the flea markets that was just locally hosted by the North Metro Model Railroad Club. These guys do a little open house to allow you to be able to see kind of what they've got going on. And it is so large, it takes so much time. Dad, I'm bored. They even did a scavenger hunt for kids if they're going to come check out the railroad. This is the railroad to give you a rough idea as far as the schematic is concerned. And if you thought you were going to avoid JMRI for a segment, you thought wrong. They're using JMRI to be able to show occupancy as well as signals. They've got a lot going on as far as the railroad is concerned, including detail. The amount of detail, interiors to, well, even scrap yards. We're talking junk, all kinds of stuff going on. It's definitely got a lot of eye candy. You don't see the same thing twice. You come to the railroad and check out to see all that they have to offer. And I know I've talked about community in the past, the Model Railroad community being a key element. Well, this is a great group of individuals that has come together to collectively create something that's pretty impressive. It's pretty cool to see. It's definitely even cooler to see in person. And I know people have asked, do they run operations? And they do. They run a car card system. This is a four-sided way build that they're using. Uh, it seems to be integrated well enough that they're able to have their club members store all their trains, still run operations. And to get that many people to get along, I think you're doing something right. And speaking of something right, check out all the BN equipment within Northtown Yard. Now, as a kid growing up, this is generally what I saw. It was all the green in Northtown. It's definitely cool to see that it was staged and set up this way. So whoever set it up, it's definitely cool. Kudos to you guys. Nothing like the old Cascade green and black. Now, check this out. Talking about BN, these are 3D printed cars. Really? Couldn't he slow down? I can't see them all. I'm trying to count. 45 of those beauties all strung together by fellow modeler Leon. Nicely done. It's cool to see modern technology where you're basically able to print your own train. Now here's something you don't see every day, a hump. My hump, my hump, my hump, my hump, my hump. This hump yard, I've actually seen it in action. It's kind of neat. They're able to kind of classify their own trains this way. I don't know if they do it during every session, but check out the bowl. They end up filling it up with a lot of cars. In terms of cars on this railroad, you're roughly looking at about 9,000 plus. That's a lot. And roughly 400 to 500 locomotives at any given time. And you ask yourself, who's crazy enough to do all this stuff? Well, it happens to be the club members that joined. And like I said before, it's that community that you're able to develop. And when you look at the old wall of fame or the group of individuals that have joined, it's not all a bunch of Q-tips. There's a lot of young guys in there too. And speaking of something young or new, the SDL 39s have recently come out and you can't go wrong with the old orange and black. A big thanks to Jacob as well as Todd for taking the time to show us around the railroad, as well as a big thanks to the North Metro Model Railroad Club and other guys that were in attendance. Very cool, nicely done. After the dull coat is dried, I end up moving on to the panel accent wash. Surprise, surprise. I use this in a lot of applications, but it's definitely great to give the car just a little bit of age. And then slide over to the AK Interactive Colored Pencils. I use chipping and aluminum. You'll notice the application as far as the attitude of the pencil. Make sure you put it on just kind of more shading it onto the car than coloring it onto the car. And I do drag the pencil along the sill just to hit the rivets. Often I'm working these pencils onto these cars just after the wash has been applied because then it softens the actual colored pencil. That's kind of key when you're trying to get a little bit more color down or at least get the effect that we're achieving here. I move on from the chipping brown to the aluminum and nick up the caps because the caps are actually aluminum. Some of the spinners are, but most of them are steel, so they're going to take on a little bit of rust. And that's it for the roof. Let's move on to the car side. Did you pause and be able to analyze 2554 to figure out that it was B, a GP22 that was built in May of 1979, a former Wisconsin Central GP9 that is now complete with dynamic brakes and a short new nose? Car side, similar technique, that low attitude to make sure that you're laying down just a little bit of color. This works well with the wash. Again, looking at the prototype, you start adding this stuff on. It's layering it, bringing it up to speed. Don't just jump right to the final result because, well, if you jump right to the final result, you don't always get the final results you desire. We're flipping over to the other side of the car. Same thing. We're laying down the colored pencil. We're laying down the washes. And then we're going to move on to some chalks. The chalks I'm choosing here is the Doc O'Brien's Dirty Brown, and I'm just working it in and actually kind of create those blotches or blemishes. I lay the tape down, as I've shown in the past, to create those air slide lines that you can kind of see on the side of the car. But when all is said and done, if you're happy with the results, bring her into the spray booth, throw down your dull coat, and in the end, you end up with a finished product like this here. So fairly straightforward, fairly simple steps. I know, again, I've covered this in a little bit more detail, but this on a yellow car, this is kind of the effect or look we're looking for. So in the end, I'm fairly pleased.
Here's the curmudgeon coming at you for the gripe of the week. The gripe of the week this week is about overweathering your freight cars. I'm telling you right now, there are people out there that weather it so much that I can't even read the reporting marks. You want me to come over and operate on your railroad? Well, I'm going to need a sandblaster to clear up all that weathering. You just want to dial it back a little bit. If it's only three years old, don't put all the grit and grime to make it look like it's 30. And that's a curmudgeon's gripe of the week. Well, I'm going to need a sandblaster to clear up all that weathering. Big thanks to everybody that watches to the end that has hit like, hit subscribe, as well as made comments in the past. It's those actions that help share this content, so if you haven't checked out other episodes, feel free to do so. You can also check out the tour of the GN 1970, as well as the past episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s. Well, I'm going to need a sandblaster to clear up all that weathering. <laughs>